Hello everyone and welcome to the One Class channel. My name is Donna and I'm a recent master's graduate from the Material Science program from the University of Ontario Institute of Technology, also known as Ontario Tech University. So today we're going to go over some commonly asked questions in chemistry at the high school, college, and university level. So if you needed any help with homework or with tutoring, then check out the links in the description below. Now let's just get started on our set of questions for today's session. Okay, so question one is a series of uh, different questions, and we have to answer these multiple choice type questions. So the first is, which of the following can be described as a trans and select all that apply? So is it a linear alkane with two groups, a linear alkane with three plus groups, a cycloalkane with two groups, cycloalkane with three plus groups, or an alkene with two groups, or an alkene with three or more groups? And then the second part of the question asks if we have a weakly basic nucleophile and a secondary haloalkane, we'll generally get blank mechanisms. And then the mechanism will, will have blank stereochemistry, either predictable or random. And then due to the planar intermediate, the backside attack transition state, frontside attack transition state, or the anti-periplanar transition state. Okay. So for step one, or for part one, uh, which of the following can be described as trans? Okay, so let me describe what a transalkene is. This is when two groups Lie on opposite sides of the double bond. Okay, so I'll have an example down here. So let's say we had a double bonded carbon. And we had a substituent, like a methyl group, on one side, or like another group on the other side, then the rest just had hydrogen. So this is an example of a transalkene. And if we were to write this in the cis conformation, Our hydrogens would be on the same side, and the substituents would be on the opposite ends. So, So I'd say the answer for one is that you need to have an alkene with two groups. Okay, so that's part A. 
Now let's look at part B. If you had a weekly basic nuclear file, so let's write weak base nuclear file. And a secondary a uh, hollow alkane. will generally generally get blank me mechanisms. So an example of this is an SN2 mechanism or an SN2 reaction. So let's show another example where we have just any weak base and a secondary halo alkane. So that just means that we have halogen on a carbon with two other substituents on it. And in this mechanism, our weak base will attack the carbon from the opposite end and then kick off the bromine which is our leaving group in this situation. And now we are left with an alcohol group on our carbon chain plus the bromine that has been kicked off. And then I would say that for this mechanism, the mechanism will have predictable geometry. And the reason for that is because bromine acts as a good leaving group uh, compared to our to methyl groups that are on this chain. So if the OH were to attack and a CH3 would leave, the CH3 minus wouldn't be as stable as a bromine minus ion would. And the reason, another reason why it is predictable geometry is because the OH will attack from the back to kick off that bromine. Uh, so this is due to the back side attack transition state. Okay, so let's see what the junior tutor says. Which of the following can be described as trans? Aside from al alkenes, cycloalkanes can also have its substituents in the cis and trans position. For an alkene, there should be at least two or three groups that are different from one another, while for a cycloalkane, there must be at least two groups occupying opposite sides for it to be considered trans. An linear alkane, on the other hand, cannot be considered a trans molecule because of its tetrahedral geometry. Therefore, from the given choices, with only cycloalkane with two and three or more groups, as well as the alkene with two and three or more groups, can be considered trans. Okay, so it's a select all that apply uh, question. So let's look up an example where we have a trans cycloalkane. Just to see what it looks like. Yep, so you can have like a, a top face cycloalkane that contains the substituents versus a trans uh, 
cycloalkane as well. Okay, so that's correct. And if we have a weakly basic nucleophile and secondary haloalkane, we'll generally get uh, most likely proceed via SN1 and E2, and the mechanism will have predictable geometry due to the planar intermediate. However, since SN1 and E2 reactions will compete with one another, a mixture of products will be obtained. Okay, so I'd say the solution is still correct. They gave a lot of examples. But I'll still say that for the second one, an SN2 reaction would probably still occur as well. Thank you.